You're watching CCN, Clarksville Community Network, produced by Goodwin Productions. Powered by CDE Lightband. Hello, I'm Ola Shabomi Bashron. Everyone calls me Ola. I'm an artist down here in Clarksville. Art for me has always been an escape type of thing. I'm not me without creating, so I've always known that I needed it. I'm from Nigeria initially. Grew up here in the States, in Oklahoma. I went to Oklahoma Baptist University. I knew I was gonna be an artist. I was one of those kids that just knew. I mean, for me, it was like I needed art, so I might as well be an artist. So if I can make it work, I should make it work. Most of our families either come to the U.S. or go to the U.K. for school. But what their whole thing was, every summer, two weeks at a time in a different city, and they fell in love with Oklahoma somehow. I flipped a coin between Boulder and Nashville after working in a mental hospital for almost a year and Nashville won and that's how I got to Tennessee. I've been in and out of Clarksville and Nashville. How I found out about Clarksville, I was working and teaching and competing as a ballroom dancer. One year somebody came in and was like, hey, we need instructors for the Clarksville Dancing with the Stars. And that's how I got to Clarksville initially. Kind of like the vibe of the city, kind of remind me of the city that I went to college in. When I create for myself, I like it to tell a story, convey emotion. I want people to look into themselves and think a little bit instead of just creating an aesthetic piece of a landscape or something like that that's beautiful. I want you to feel something. The series around before you find actual love, you gotta understand and embrace yourself. In my tribal language, it's called Ikono Afe Arami, and which means but first love yourself. And so I'm creating images of people just kind of embracing their them. The first one started off with a friend. It's funny, I was just using her as a model. But after I finished and painted the entire thing, I told her why I had her pose that way. And she was like, that's crazy because a couple of years ago I had to go through that transformation for myself and figure out who I am before I got and was able to be in a successful relationship. So I've done a self-portrait every year since I was 12. And that one was 2018's. The mood that I was feeling then was just more, where am I going? What, what is what I'm doing right now? Where is it gonna take me? A photographer actually had just stopped me one day. He was like, hey man, I wanna take a photo of you. And he was like, stand right here. So there was a hole in the ceiling, like a, not a hole, but a cutout when the sun was coming out perfectly. He was like, your dark skin is gonna be perfect with this spot in the light. And he puts me in this spot and he's like, okay, I'm gonna take a few photos. And he was like, took one and he looked at it. He was like, this is perfect, that's it. And then he sent it to me. And then a couple months later, I was like, what am I gonna do for my self portrait? I pulled that picture up and it's just me just staring off. And I was like, okay, this, 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 this will be it. This is the work. Pixelated Love series. I wrote down a poem, I, don't, I can't say it verbatim, but essentially it was about pixels in an image in the computer screens and everything like that. It's a bunch of little pixels that create the entire image and that's what love is. Instead of pixels, it's little moments. 
things that you've done together from the moment you saw each other to the first kiss or the first handshake, the first hug, the good times, the bad times, all of those moments come together and create all these little pixels in our relationship. And the entire series is done with little tiny plus signs, with big brushes, small brushes, creating the entire image just like pixels in the computer screen. This one right here, one of my friends, photographer in Texas, he took that photo. Then I was like, I want to do an old couple. And then I want to do just hands. Just photos that different photographers that I know from Instagram and stuff like that, that I got those from. And then 2020, I kept hearing stories about the elder generations being separated for like months at a time. And this particular couple that the idea came from, they were separated for about seven months. And when they got back together, they were just trying to embrace. I try to make sure that I'm always creating pieces for myself. I call it my one-third rule. I always one-third is doing commission pieces, another third is doing the murals and finding more work and all that kind of stuff. But that last third has to be the reason why you do what you do. Because if you forget that part, then it all becomes just a job. Then you hate your job at the end of the day because it's not the reason why you went into it. And then that last 1%, you gotta make sure you're not doing anything. Just relaxing. My first mural that I was involved in was in college. The city of, of uh, Shawnee, Oklahoma uh, brought in a professional muralist to do a project. So she came to the university that I was at and was like, hey, I need several students to help design and do the mural. All the students there, she selected like five of us, and I got to see the wall, got to take the photos of the wall, bring it down, then we sat down with a professional uh, muralist already that's already done tons of them and designed her mural for her. That mural initially, they only wanted a eight by eight foot mural, and that was the wall that it was gonna go on. If I'm gonna design something, I'm gonna design it for the whole wall. I mean, that's a huge wall. I think the length of it is like 99.6, so almost 100 feet. The height was 40, and then they were only gonna put one small eight by eight mural on there. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna design it for this. If you want me to do it small, I will, but I'm gonna design for the whole wall. And they saw it, then the owner of the building saw it. He was like, yeah, I'll pay you the extra money to go ahead and do it on the whole wall versus the eight by eight that they proposed. The owner at one point put it up for sale, the building up for sale for over a million dollars. And I'm gonna count that as me selling my artwork for millions of dollars. So once that sells now, I will be a one of those artists, you know? I'm there, I made it. <laughs> try to move in stages to where when I start something, I'm moving fluidly, consistently all throughout the whole thing. Versus adding a bunch of detail right here, nothing here is done yet, you know? To where when I say stop, then I can stop and it's still completed. How I propose to my wife. We met eight years ago. Um, at Five Spot in East Nashville where it's just Motown music all night, swing dancing. When I decided I was gonna propose to her, I was like, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do this? But like I said, I've done a self-portrait every single year since I was 12. So 2019, my hat and painted it. She was like, don't forget to paint your self-portrait. So I'm like, okay, cool. December 31st, 2019, I go to the studio and I set up a time lapse um, and I paint just me like this. December 31st happened to be on a Monday night, which we met on a Monday night at Five Spots. So then I'm like, hey, let's go to Five Spot for New Year's. So we bought the tickets and then two of our friends went. But before we go in, my friend um, is like, hey, did you see his self-portrait? Because I didn't tell her what I was doing at the studio. 
And she was like, what, you painted yourself portrait? He was like, yeah, I got the video. He's showing her the time-lapse video, and I grab the ring, bend down. His girlfriend gets to the right angle of me doing it from the photo, and then she turns around and she snaps the photo. So um, then we go out, we have a good time, we're engaged. And then the next day, I come in and paint her into it. That was how I proposed to the wife right here. Spirit Animal Series. I think I'm on number seven of that series. I'll probably go to 12 and, and cut it off there. This one's actually my wife, and I'd say her spirit animal is either a chihuahua or a fox. Chihuahua because she likes to sleep all day. The fox is just because she's redheaded, you know? <laughs> We all have different styles and there's millions of people that like your style. There are millions of people that are gonna like my style. You just find your niche and do what you need to do. I started off with just painting portraits of famous people constantly all the time. Until people started being like, oh, I know who that is, know who that is. Can you draw my kid? I'm like, yes, of course. I painted this uh, Stan Lee like a day after he died and I call it the Marvel God, and these are some of his first characters all throughout it. And so I wanted to paint the entire thing in the background first. There's Marvel Comics written down, and that was his design of it before it was updated, and I wanted it to be stoic. We've got this really, really colorful thing going on. I talk about me learning stuff from other artists all the time. And I'm not an abstract artist. Abstraction is something that I have to teach myself. An abstract artist I had a show at the gallery once and she had a bunch and bunch of texture in it, way more than this painting has. And I was like, what'd you use? She was like, can you figure it out? And I'm like, no, that's why I asked. <laughs> and uh, she's like, smell it. So then I go up and put my nose up to it and I sniff and I'm like, is that coffee? And it was coffee. And I was like, dude, that's pretty cool. So I was like, I wanna try it. So I created an abstract piece and showed some colors, mixed it with some coffee grounds and, and went at it. And I've probably done about five of those paintings. It's super fun. Um, just chill, and for a while, I'd say about two, three months, they smell like coffee when you sniff it. So I used to be a professional ballroom dancer, and I was teaching ballroom in Nashville. I think it was Altrusa. Um, they raised money for Austin P students to, to go to Austin P, but they always hosted an event called the Clarksville Dancing with the Stars, and I ended up being one of the instructors. Long story short, I met a, a lady, one of the people that I was teaching. Um, she was like, yeah, I have this house, it's vacant, you can teach dance lessons there, and I was like, okay, cool, but I'm gonna end up doing like the sip and paint and private art lessons and things like that too. She was like, okay, cool. Across from Northeast High School, um, I had in the little house there, I lived there for a little period, short period, and taught the ballroom dance lessons and sip and paint classes and private art lessons and created a bunch of pieces in there. That was my first real connection to Clarksville. It wasn't, it wasn't just art, it was just the, the dance aspect that pulled me in slowly. Clarksville is one of those cities that reels people in. This one was uh, 2019. Was a dancer, but I'm like love ballerinas, and most of my dance partners were ex ballerinas. February, Black History Month, and um, in my Nashville galleries, we had the art crawl, and every art crawl I'd sit and live paint throughout the whole thing. And this is a portrait of Misty Copeland. She was at the time was the first black principal ballerina in New York. I really wanted to capture the movement 
of the flow of the dances and things like that. And so that's what, I, that's what the goal was and I eventually painted another one. I loved it just because it's dance and I did it in my own style, you know, just freely. There are different shapes and angles and things like that, like the triangle represents something that comes back to you. The triangle is going to be in all of them because it's a shape that is hard to break because the sturdy base. Some of them I'll do the circle because of unity. Some of them I've done a square because of what the square means. So my art is somewhat expensive down for, for the South. So what I decided to do is every few years I'm, I'm going to do what I call a 90 day challenge. I have to create 90 pieces in 90 days, uh, one a day, and I'm gonna sell them for 100 bucks. Yes, I might, five of them might be the same concept, same idea, but it can't be any of the ideas that I've done in the past. So I have to recreate new stuff. So it does something for me too. It forces me to be more creative, out of the box, this and that. And then some of those ideas after this project is done, I could go back to and actually fully develop. This is one of them. There's gonna be 12 of this series. Their eyes, they all are in shapes and then surrounded by abstract pieces. Some people think it's like land or something like that, but I just kind of played with the texture. While I was doing this 90 day challenge, I was using a lot of paper towel because of cleaning brushes and so on and so on. I was like, what am I gonna do with these paper towels? Maybe I can use it as texture in a painting. So then I just grabbed the blank canvas and I started playing with paint and paper towels and doing all this stuff. And then literally a smaller version of that one came out. I was like, okay, I'll do something detailed within this abstract piece. I'm more of a realist artist than I am abstract. Like I said, I force myself to do abstract, but sometimes I like to put it together. I'm gonna do a really detailed eye, and I'm gonna call the series, I represent the shape. There's a square, there's a circle, there's a star, there's all different kinds of shapes. And all those shapes mean something different that people can actually be like, I need this in my life, you know? Just took what those things mean, wrote a little snippet about it, and created different pieces that look like this. I had never seen Caucasian people ever that I remember um, then coming to the suburbs in Oklahoma being the only black kid in the entire elementary school. I was kind of crazy. Talking about all the protests, the things going on. I tell people all the time, I'm, I'm from Nigeria and exactly what the United States goes through with police brutality and all that kind of stuff happens in Nigeria and we're all black. And I'm like, it's not necessarily always just about race, but I, in, in this reality, it kind of is. Three of those people in the photo kneeling are my friends. One of them is my wife, one of them is my sister, one of them is another artist. Then those are actually real officers that actually nailed down and protested with protesters. For me, this one was more a unity piece, just like, hey, we're all, like this is a pretty bad situation and we're all in this together. There's no reason for us to, um, be fighting about this. Not one to go out and protest, but I can, I have my following, I have a platform that I can use and continue doing what I do. I've already said that I write a lot before creating images, and for me it's using my tool and what I'm good at to express and change people's hearts and reach hearts, change their hearts, get them to realize things and understand things versus just painting aesthetic images all the time. I painted this one actually live outside the Roxy when the mayor spoke and the new police chief spoke, I believe, that day. And then a couple of other people were speaking, just talking about and trying to 
um, let know that the citizens are like, we're okay, the police department here is trying to do their job, do their thing. This one is a history and present. Because you have on this side, police officer current, you have a young black guy, they're all holding and embracing and walking together. This is Martin Luther King because that was the same concept, it was the same vibe, same move of them walking down the street. One of the speakers were saying is that we have to be the light. Um, she mentioned that we have to be the change. And yes, she said, I am mourning. I'm not mourning necessarily just for X, Y, and Z, people who've lost their lives, but I'm mourning for our ancestors that this has happened to. I'm mourning because this could be my kid. I'm mourning for that this is decades later and we're still doing the same thing. And so as people were talking during that speech, I was writing down some of the things for those pieces. But uh, my friend, a photographer in Nashville, she actually took a photo of a young lady actually holding up the words in this sign. My 2020 self-portrait. For me, it's about there's so much to fight for. And for me, I protest through creating pieces, but there's so many things more than just Black Lives Matter and police brutality to fight for. And I'm like, okay, what do you believe in? Let's say that's not your thing. What do you believe in? What are you gonna fight for? Is just living and going through the motions worth it? Some parents are fighting for their, their kids to have a better life than they are. What are you fighting for? For this, I wanted to bring out a bunch of different situations because we were so influenced in 2020 with just police brutality and Black Lives Matter. I'm like, but all these things are still going on. And what can be said about it? I literally got newspaper articles of current situations, things that are dear to me, but things that are dear to some of my other friends injustices all all around it was how i was feeling in 2020. it's funny because i was talking to somebody the other day they were asking me about all my self-portraits and i was like you know once i realized what art does for the soul my self-portraits changed i was like when i was younger they all used to be me sitting in front of the mirror like this you know <laughs> And then as I got older, they started speaking a little bit more. Sometimes it's abstract. Sometimes it's, it's an anger thing. Sometimes it's a sad thing. Sometimes it's a protest thing. Art just allows me to look into my soul more. And when I project and bring out an actual image, I want, when you see it, I want, you, I want you to look into your soul a little bit and see something, learn something about you. Art speaks. I want mine to speak. I mean, I do have fun creating small aesthetic pieces that are just pretty and cute and stuff. It, oftentimes that's what sells. Um, so I definitely do that too. I prefer creating the pieces that talk to you. you come back and you're like, oh yeah, I remember that time in my life. Yeah, or, oh yeah, that relationship was awesome. What is he actually trying to share there? I want you to come in and be moved. But within every negative thing in my life, there's been something to make me smile. And if I just focus on those things, I'm good.
For current and exclusive content, subscribe to CDE Lightband, connecting you at the speed of light.